Final Fantasy vs. 13 was a game that spent over 7 years in development purgatory, seemingly never progressing. Because of this, the game's director, Tetsuya Nomura, was unable to begin on the development of a third mainline entry to Kingdom Hearts within the cycle of Last Generation. Combine that with how long the highly anticipated Final Fantasy VII Remake has been missing in action, and the end result is the perception that Tetsuya Nomura is slow at development. This has led some people to even believe that Nomura is incompetent as a director, an attribute him to the failure of the game that was intended to be his magnum opus, Final Fantasy vs. 13. But in a recent interview with Juan Hasmir, the lead designer for both Final Fantasy vs. 13 and Final Fantasy 15, comments on the matter. He clarified that Nomura isn't slow when it comes to developing games. In fact, he's actually incredibly fast. Unfortunately, he's quite often dealt some very bad hands from either the company or general circumstances. In the interview, lead designer Hamzer recalls his time working on Final Fantasy Versus 13. In particular, he recalls how he worked on the incredibly well-known scene from the 7-minute gameplay trailer for Versus, which features an airship crashing into the party room and Niflheim soldiers being dispatched. He said that he felt that Nomura is an absolute visionary in a way that really only people who work directly with him get to see. Hasmir then recalls one time the team being stuck on a level design challenge when working for Versus 13. They had been stuck on there for days, unable to solve the problem. Eventually, they went to Nomura himself about the issue. In in order to see if he would be able to solve the problem or what his opinions were. Hasmer said, quote, The team was stuck for a week or so trying to solve a level design problem, and when they met with him, he solved it in five minutes. That's right, an issue that a whole team of people couldn't figure out for the better, Tetsuya Nomura was able to solve almost instantly. Hasmer then notes that he views Nomura as a true visionary, quote, He looks at a game at its completion. It's already there in his head. He's very adaptive. He can change according to the situation, but man, does he have a lot of answers in his head. This endless fountain of ideas is what makes him one of Square Enix's most valuable creators. Though this may beg the question for you, if Nomura is so fast and efficient at working, then why does it seem like every major game that he's worked on post Kingdom Hearts 2 seems to take so impossibly long? Hasmer said that Nomura's games take so long because of the circumstances that are usually out of their control, and not Nomura himself. Hasmir said on the matter that it's not really the director. There's so many things, even if it's not controlled by the company, like the ecosystems and platforms changing. Hasmir basically explaining that it was nothing in Nomura's direct control that ultimately made Final Fantasy vs. 13 not work out. These unfortunate circumstances are what ultimately led to the game taking so long and eventually being rebooted as Final Fantasy 15. Of course, Final Fantasy vs. 13 was a game whose production almost seemed cursed at times. Times. First, there was the problematic Crystal Tools engine, which was developed overly specific to Final Fantasy XIII in order to finish the game more quickly. Of course, this also led to Final Fantasy vs. 13 staff being pulled off of the game to assist with finishing FF 13 as well. Crystal Tools would then be used on Final Fantasy 14 1.0, causing the game to have massive technical issues. This resulted in the game failing and needing to be completely remade in order to work, causing Square Enix to bleed a massive amount of money, negatively affecting the budget of projects like vs. 13. This led to the team modifying the game's engine and eventually creating Ebony Engine the earlier version of what would eventually become Luminous Studio Engine. Of course, by the time Versus 13's development was fully back on track, six years had passed and it was 2012. Nearly an entire generation had been missed, with all that time being spent on solving issues. Considering the scope of the project and the advent of the PlayStation 4, Square decided to reboot the game as Final Fantasy XV, and eventually moving Nomura to other projects that also needed him, like Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy VII Remake. Despite those projects having external factors that caused them to take far longer than they were originally anticipated, Kingdom Hearts 3, after a year into development, would see Square Enix's higher-ups switching the game from Luminous Studio Engine to the more broadly used Unreal Engine 4, at the sacrifice of a full year of development time. Final Fantasy VII Remake was being co-developed by CyberConnect 2, but eventually this partnership ended, with context clues pointing us to the fact that it was most likely the case that Square Enix was not satisfied with CC2's work. This resulted in the game being moved in-house, and it's unknown how much development time was lost. Looking back on all these unfortunate events, as well as the ones we will never know about purely due to non-disclosure agreements involved, it almost seems like Nomura is cursed. While meaning well and having a strong creative vision, 
His games always seem to face incredibly rough circumstances, and because of this it's even began to reflect negatively on him as a director. I truly do believe he's a creative genius, and has played an absolutely pivotal role in the identity of Squaresoft, Square Enix, and the JRPG industry at large. My hopes are that his next projects roll much more smoothly than the brutal circumstances he's been facing this generation and the last. So Ultimate Weapons, did all of this surprise you about Tetsuya Nomura? Do you still have faith in him, or are you just hoping that circumstances work out for him for the better next time around? Subscribe, click the bell icon, and let me know in the comments below. And if you've been enjoying my content, be sure to check out the Patreon for the Night Sky Prince, like my awesome supporter Aaron Johnson. They help keep this channel growing and alive. A deep thank you to them. Shout out to them and the rest of the Ultima community.